About two months ago, I made this video. I put aside my iPhone 14 Pro and I switched to the new Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5. And I have to say, I've really been enjoying using this phone. Last week, the new iPhone 15 lineup dropped. And of course, being a tech channel, I picked up one of the devices, in my case, the iPhone 15 Pro Max, made a first impressions video about it. And I've been daily driving it next to the Fold 5 for about a week now. And I guess the question is, which one is the better phone? Let's ramble. Hey, what is up, guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. So yeah, if you happen to catch my Fold 5 video where I basically announced that I was switching from my 14 Pro to the new Fold, you know that my reasoning behind it was that you know, that I got bored of using the same phones over and over. The iPhone was starting to feel really stale to me and I was ready for something different. I'd never used a foldable phone before and the idea of switching to the Fold 5 really appealed to me. I find that we get stuck in one of two camps way too easily. We made up our minds about iPhone or Android like eight years ago and we've been repeating the same polarizing mantras ever since. I don't think that makes a lot of sense because what you will find when you give the other platform an honest try from time to time is that both platforms keep evolving quite a bit and chances are they're nothing like they were when you made up your mind about which one is better. So since I started using the Fold 5, I've rediscovered some nice Android features I forgot about. I discovered even more new ones and I discovered there's a few things about the iPhone I really, really missed. So the most obvious difference between these two flagship phones is of course the form factor. While they're both chunky boys, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is a single 6.7 inch slab with an LTPO Super Retina XDR OLED display, 120 Hertz ProMotion display, while the Fold has both a 6.2 inch 120 Hertz dynamic AMOLED 2X cover display and a much bigger 7.6 inch dynamic AMOLED 2X display, also 120 hertz, essentially turning it into a mini tablet. Both displays look absolutely stunning and both are very bright with a peak brightness of 1750 nits for the Samsung and 2000 nits for the iPhone in HDR mode. If I'm being honest, I do have a slight preference for the display on the Fold 5. Content just looks a little bit better and I find it more enjoyable to watch. Another advantage of the Fold 5 and its bigger screen over the 15 Pro Max is multitasking. I love how modular the multitasking is. You can place apps top to bottom, side by side. You can even use more than two apps and you can resize the windows on a very granular level. You can also use the new S Pen Pro with the Fold 5. I find the inside display size ideal for taking quick notes and it comes with some cool extra features as well, like using the S Pen as a remote for your phone. This is definitely a department where Samsung and Android come out on top compared to iOS and the iPhone. And while we're talking about productivity, let's not forget about Samsung DeX. You can literally hook up the Fold 5 to a display and turn it into a full-blown desktop experience. Now, personally, I don't really use it. I'd much rather sit down at an actual computer for that kind of work, but I know some people use it all the time. And even for people like me who don't really use it normally, it's there in a pinch. And that's something the iPhone simply doesn't offer. Now in the camera department, things are not so clear cut for me. The camera system as such on the iPhone 15 Pro Max is superior. The camera system on the Fold 5 is decent. It's not at S23 Ultra levels, but it's perfectly capable. The selfie camera on the front screen is a 10 megapixel wide lens and the triple camera array on the back consists of a 50 megapixel wide, a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 10 megapixel telephoto lens. The cameras on the iPhone 15 Pro Max are definitely more advanced, especially in the video department. The front facing camera is a 12 megapixel wide lens and the triple array on the back has a 48 megapixel wide, a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 12 megapixel telephoto lens with that 5x zoom, which is is equivalent to a 120 millimeter lens. What's cool about this lens is that the extra focal length is not achieved by a periscope lens, unlike the rumor suggested. It is actually a very clever system whereby light is bounced several times over by means of a prism, thereby extending the distance and the focal length. I don't know if this is entirely new technology, but I've never seen it used before and I think it's quite brilliant. So again, objectively speaking, the iPhone has the better cameras, but the full five comes out on top when we're talking about usability of those cameras. 
being able to use the massive inside screen to operate the camera and preview the photos or videos is a big plus for me. Another feature which I think is underrated is that the front display allows you to use the back cameras, the good cameras if you will, to film yourself or take selfies because when the phone is folded open, you can use the front panel just like you would a flip out screen on something like a mirrorless camera. If you're into shooting vertical, that's definitely a big plus. And lastly, you can use what Samsung calls flex mode to set up the fold like a tripod, which makes filming yourself a lot easier. To do that with an iPhone 15 Pro Max, you would need to use a tripod and a phone clamp, which is obviously not as convenient. Now there are definitely some downsides to the display on the Fold 5 as well. Neither of the displays are really comfortable to type on, the front screen is just a little bit too narrow to type comfortably for a long time, and the inside display is simply too big. Typing long emails is much easier on the iPhone. Another disadvantage of the form factor of the Fold 5 is that it's very difficult to find a good case for it. I've tried two Samsung cases, one which houses the S Pen, since the Fold still doesn't have an internal silo for it, and one with a little kickstand that lets you prop up the phone for easy viewing. The problem is, both of those cases make this already large phone even bulkier, to a point where it literally feels like I'm holding a TV remote. Rocking the Fold 5 naked feels amazing, but I don't really feel comfortable doing that with a $2,000 all-glass phone. For me, the solution has been the new Armor Air case by Banks, who have kindly agreed to sponsor this section of the video. The Armor Air case is a back cover made with real DuPont Kevlar fiber, which offers robust protection while keeping things slim and minimal. It fits perfectly, it's extremely thin and light, very strong, scratch resistant, and it protects the camera lenses, which I personally find very important. It's easy to attach, easy to take back off, and it's MagSafe compatible. What I like about this case is that it offers that grip, you know, that secure grip that you miss when you rock the phone naked, but it doesn't give it that bulky look and feel. I would definitely recommend giving it a try, and if you wanna pick one up for yourself, there's a link in the description. One thing I definitely noticed using the Fold 5 is that a lot of apps are much better optimized for iOS, and some of the apps I like to use on my iPhone are simply not available on Android. The same is true for games, and it looks like that gap might become even bigger after Apple announced AAA games will be coming to the iPhone Pro models very soon. And I can't wait to play titles like Assassin's Creed on the iPhone. Now, in terms of handheld gaming, the Fold 5 is a clear winner for me. It's much nicer to play games on the big internal display. It just looks and feels amazing. But since the iPhone now finally has USB-C, you can hook it up to an external monitor, hook up a controller, and play your favorite games that way. Couple that with these new upcoming titles and the improved gaming performance, and you've got yourself an interesting setup there. For me, this is the first time I look at the iPhone 15 Pro Max as a serious mobile gaming device. Now, there's a couple more things to consider, things I didn't really think about until after I switched. One of those is switching from Apple CarPlay to Android Auto. Initially, I hated it. The user interface looks super dated and it just doesn't feel nice to use, you know? Apple CarPlay is much more vibrant and smoother somehow. But there's one thing that instantly puts Android Auto at an advantage for me, and that is Google Assistant. I'm sure we can all admit that Siri is pretty useless as a virtual assistant. Our entire house is operated by Google, so I was very happy to have Google Assistant in the car with me instead of Siri. One thing I've grown accustomed to on the Fold and I miss on the iPhone is the Edge panel. I love having the convenience of swiping in an additional dock full of apps I use a lot. Of course, there's the app drawer on the iPhone, but that's not the same thing. I would personally love for Apple to adopt something like the Edge panel on the iPhone. Power sharing has been super useful on the Fold 5. I know we can now finally use the iPhone's USB-C port for reverse charging, but not needing a cable just adds that little bit of extra convenience. And of course, there's a few little things that literally just come down to preference, like Face ID versus fingerprint scanner. Now, there's one massive advantage to the iPhone 15 Pro Max for me, as I use predominantly Apple products in my workflow and my daily life, and that is the Apple ecosystem. I know my Android friends are tired of hearing this, they don't like the word, but it's something that cannot be ignored. No matter how hard I try integrating the Fold 5 into my daily workflow of MacBooks, iPads, and Apple Watches, it's just too damn difficult. And even the best alternatives still feel like a workaround. There just isn't anything that truly replaces things like AirDrop, the ability to copy text on one device and paste it on the other, 
continuity camera, seamless switching between devices, whether it's using AirPods between different Apple devices or operating everything with a single keyboard and mouse combo. It just works. And that to me, as much as I do really love the Fold 5, makes it impossible to completely ditch the iPhone. So I guess from now on, you can call me Captain Two Phones, although I believe that name might be taken. So guys, what do you think? Which one of these is the better phone? Or rather, which one is the better phone for you? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please give it one of these. It really does help the channel. Subscribe for more content and stay tuned for some links to videos you might also wanna watch.